Hi, it's Jen from Shabby Fabrics. This is the Year in Words wall hanging for August. Now, if you join the club, good job getting your spot. As you know, that did sell out. We have some limited kits remaining. So if you are watching this video and you didn't join the club, hopefully you'll be able to get a kit before those are completely gone. But hey, even if you wanna just learn how to make this cute little beehive block, we'd love for you to download that. And while you're downloading that, uh, either from the link below, uh, maybe if you're watching on YouTube or on the Shabby Fabrics homepage at the bottom, there's a link that says free downloads. There's so much more to download, more projects, DIY, um, and fun tutorials. So be sure to subscribe um, to our YouTube channel, all of our social media, and of course, email as well, because that's when we let you know about new kits, new projects, and of course, new clubs, just like a year in words. So for this block, there's a lot of pieces. And so for this time, um, I labeled everything. Some of the pieces were very similar in size. And I have found before when I've done projects that I didn't label them, I sometimes sewed the wrong piece to uh, various parts and ended up doing some seam ripping. So this was one that had enough parts, enough pieces that I felt labeling was going to help me be successful and might be something you might consider as well. Just like we've been doing for the other year and words wall hangs, of course, we start off with our background fabric and we're cutting our main piece that we'll be using for our applique background. And that's where we, we use our light box and the applique pressing sheet if you need to, to go ahead and applique those shapes down. And as always, we're using that applique uh, thread set that we'd put together for the Year and Words Club to stitch everything down. Our focus for today, of course, will be though on how do we put together this cute little beehive block. And you can see it'd be fun to incorporate that maybe into another project besides a wall hanging. So as I mentioned, lots of little pieces, and let me just jump forward into that. And then at the very end of the video, we'll talk about a little bit of that hand embroidery we did here, in case that's new to you. I'll show you how fun and easy that is to do that running stitch. So uh, looking inside um, this pattern, if you're in the club, or maybe the free download, if you're just gonna be downloading that, as you can see, I've labeled all of my pieces, and we're doing a lot of uh, what we call snowballing the corners. It's just a term that is used in quilting. So let me just bring out uh, some of the stuff I've done ahead of time. This is labeled, so I just confirm I've got everything in the right location. And granted, these are shown as triangles, but they start off as squares. And as you'll see, once we sew those, put that aside. So this is all we've done here, as we've just put these in the corners, we've drawn the line. You've seen us do that before. Put that right there. So if that's new to you, and by the way, we started this series many months back. Be sure to go back and you're going to see a lot of those other steps in more detail about how to do the applique and various steps of doing uh, the year and words wall hangings. So you just draw the line just like that. So on the line, I wanted to save us a little bit of time. So I've done that ahead of time. And I don't clip off this excess until I've pressed everything out and away from my center to make sure I'm happy with what I've done. If I'm not happy with that, I just seam rip and start again. And we'll just press those to the outside. And that's how we're getting that look that's shown here with those triangles in the corner. So that's called snowballing a block. And I'm just gonna to continue to press those other ones to the outside and we'll trim those up. This is where, you know, anytime while I'm pressing this, I'll just give you some of my thoughts about blocks like this. Anytime I'm dealing with a lot of pieces and they're small, a lot of things come into play. Adding some sizing to your fabric is always great. It reduces the stretching and it increases your accuracy when you're pressing because it kind of stabilizes that fabric. It also tells me I need a fresh rotary blade in my rotary cutter because the cuts all matter because they're so tiny. Um, and of course, an accurate quarter inch seam allowance. So now that I'm happy with what I'm seeing, I feel like we've done a good job of snowballing those corners. We'll just go back and trim all of those away, which I'll do real quick. And then we'll move on to the next step of assembling our uh, beehive block.
Okay, so now that we have this, now at the very bottom, I went ahead and just sewed, this is our, our little door our opening to our beehive, and I've sewn those and pressed toward the middle. So now we simply can, it doesn't really matter the arrangement, I can, I can sew this together, but I think let's go ahead and sew those sides on. Anytime again that I've got this more intricate, um, smaller shapes, that's where accuracy really comes into play, especially knowing that it's all going to need to be sewn together. Now I could sew from this side, but notice on the back side, that seam's gonna wanna roll. So this is where I'd recommend you flip that over. There's always a little bit of strategy of which side should I sew from? So here, again, I could sew here, or if I sew it from this direction, now as my presser foot comes, this seam is already pressed this way, it'll wanna track right over top of that, which is desirable. So let's go ahead and sew that together. And while we're here, we might as well sew this. I'm gonna place that on top so that I can see that seam as well. I always try to make my trip to the sewing machine efficient and say, what, you know, what could I sew right now at my, um, at my home sewing studio, if you call it that. It's kind of just a room in my house my where I kind of organize my shapes isn't right next to my sewing machine so I try to make my trip efficient across the room there all right so let's go sew our quarter inch seam allowance where that's going to be very important that this is accurate so our block goes together well You know, patchwork pins, that's what I'm using right now. When I first started off as a young quilter, I grabbed whatever I could find in the gauge. The thickness of this was so bulky. <laughs> and when someone introduced me to these patchwork pins of just how fine they were, they just glide right into the fabric without disturbing anything. I, I it was it was a game changer for me. So if you haven't tried things like the patchwork pins, by all means, I'd love to encourage you to try some of these things that for me were definitely improvements in, in uh, just the notions that I was using. Um, creative grid rulers, I love the accuracy of it. Um, my piecing is more, my blocks are coming out the right size with, with the, between the rotary blade, a fresh rotary blade, good patchwork pins and the creative grid, my blocks are coming out and, and an honest quarter inch seam allowance. My blocks are really coming out so much better. Um, those tools do make a difference. Okay, so we've got that done. Now let's look at this and see what makes sense. I'm just gonna press toward this direction because you can see that seam. There's a lot of bulk over here, but nothing over here. So, you know, sometimes that's another thing. Pressing, pressing is a thing. Pressing also leads to um, doing a good job of pressing. Not this, but pressing. I have to remind myself of that sometimes. Also can have a big effect on the accuracy of your blocks. Okay, on this side, oh, let me press that one real quick as well. To the outside. So now we need to do the same on these two sides. Let's have a look at that. I too, I, on this one, on this side, I want to point so something out to you. On this side, as I look, see how that's folded this way? Therefore, on this side, I'm going to sew on the blue side, not the other side. Because I always want to, I don't want my seam this way coming toward my presser foot, especially if it's on the bottom because it can roll and I don't want that to happen. So let me set that up. Same with this one. I'm gonna sew on this side 
So that is traveling in the direction that I'm moving in, and I won't have a rolled seam on that one either. So let's go sew those together. piece right there. Tiny, tiny. Okay. So let's set that up and this one up as well. And then finally here. So our hope now is that everything works <laughs> and fits together. So right side together. And I will pin and we'll, we will assemble this in real time. We'll see how we're doing. pressing things like that you know if you feel that your block is wanting to, to press in a certain direction you can go with that or if you're like no I want to distribute the bulk evenly and you decide to press your seams open there are there are times when there's it's just a preference and there's other times where it's very obvious and this one isn't as obvious I'm going to go for pressing open we'll see what happens with that And then we'll sew these together and then finally the top part of our block and we'll have our bee block done beehive block done I should say once we put the top on So why don't we press that open again? I think that worked pretty well. Oh, that is cute. Super cute. Really fun. Fun little block. And let's sew that top on. I will sew from here because I want to see all those seams, make sure I am not getting any rolled seams. For the top portion, because I don't have anything out here, you can see this just wants to go uh, press up to the top and I'm, I'm going to comply with that <laughs> desire of that thing to do that. And there's our block. How cute is that? And of course, if you didn't need that big of a, a the upper portion for that, we did that so it would marry up with the size of the applique. You could just cut that down so that it's a little bit narrow, whatever that would be for you, for your project. So that's how we would put together our little block there. Again, all of those tools are really helpful. And of course, labeling everything. So things are going together in the proper location. So let me set that aside and let's go ahead and move on to once you, uh, of course, complete all of those um, beehives, you'd sew those together 
And then with this as well, you would put in your applique and really you'd be using the applique uh, pressing sheet maybe to pre-assemble your little bees here. Maybe not as big of a need for the applique pressing uh, mat on this one, but it sure is nice to be able to bring out the light box and you can use your diagrams to uh, draw the line for the bees trail. We have a solid line there, so if you wanna have that be just a solid line, you can, or if you like that kind of more dash running stitch, you can just draw a, a kind of a tick every so often. And again, I encourage you to do that with a friction pen so that if you're just slightly off on your hand embroidery, you can iron that away. So once we have our fabric, I'll just grab some of that. Um, I can actually do that on here. It's a little bit easier for me to manage that. I'm just gonna draw the line where we might have our little trail. And if you want to draw just the skip like that, which is helpful, you just draw that in there. I encourage you to use um, the Richard Hemming size four needles are super affordable. They're just a couple dollars, two strands of the embroidery floss. You have that included in your kit there. Um, if you're getting the kit, I just put a knot in the end and it's a very straightforward stitch. You're just coming up and it's just, you're covering the line that you've drawn. It's as, about as simple as, of a stitch as it could possibly be. And then you're just coming up in the next location and covering that line, super easy. I think one of the <laughs> things about um, the running stitch is because there's less stitch in the fabric, it's like, where do you, where do you tie off? Um, on the back without it showing. So I'll show you that, kind of how I manage that. What you might want to do is kind of plan your stitch. Let me just move that quick. Plan your stitch so that maybe you're gonna start it here and end it so that you can tie off behind the B, right? You just don't want to start it somewhere in the middle. Start it either down here and finish here or start here and finish at the bottom so that if you do tie off, you can hide that in the binding or you can hide that behind the bee. But um, if, you, if you ever do a running stitch, maybe just somewhere along the bottom of a towel on a project and you, st you don't have anything to you know, kind of hide behind, the best way to tie off a running stitch, and that's what that running stitch looks like, is to just kind of tie back beneath where you just stitched, where you just came from. And the trick is to not pull too tight that you create a pucker on the front. That's the only thing. If you are gonna tie off into the stitches themselves, you have to go very shallow on the back. And then notice how you just kind of, you're just wanting to create that little knot but not create a pucker on the front, just like that. And then you'll just trim that away. So that's a running stitch, super simple. As far as on the B itself, if you wanted to add little antennas, maybe and this is like a bonus. If you wanted to add some French knots, I'm just gonna show you that real quick. That's not drawn in our patterns. I know some people love little French knots to add that little detail, maybe inside there for their B. You would just come up. Again, this is not in the pattern, but in case you want to add that detail, just come up two strands to the side, needles horizontal. I wrap around one, two, maybe three times. Go back down inside the very place I came up. and just go back down, just like that. Super cute. I'll do it one more time. And again, that's only if you want to add a little bit of antenna to your little bee. And that's it. And then you just tie off, just like you did before, tying off within itself. So. As you can see, it's pretty fun to make the beehive block and fun little simple hand embroidery just adds a sweet little touch 
So, hey, if you haven't already subscribed, like I mentioned, be sure to do that so you don't miss out. And I'll see you soon for a year in words for September.